in the midst of them. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement of the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. That there was the common court, there was the altar, there was the veil, and the only one that could go through that veil was the high priest. And he went through that veil with the blood of the lamb to go through the procedures of offering up a sacrificial offering unto God. Now the law and the prophets have now declared we are justified without. Glory to God. And then what we just read in Galatians that now the law and the prophets have declared that God's not interested in bulls and goats and sheep and heifers and a bloody altar. Glory to God. There was one that became the propitiation the sacrifice for our sin. Now, now we can set believing in such a surface, superficial way, just so that we can kind of meander and get by in the world. Or we can enjoy the fruits of what God's Word actually said. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The difference between the believer and the one that is able to take of the Word of God and apply it the way the Bible declares it. The 25th verse, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past to the forbearance of God. Now, listen to what Paul is saying to the church of Rome. He's telling them that, that there is a propitiation for our sin. The children of Israel had to study <coughs> the Pentateuch, the Talmud. They, they had to know it. It was part of their daily life that they went through. The Bible said that they would start reading the law and the prophets early in the morning and read it all night long. I sat here for 50 minutes on Sunday morning and people get bored and we're not interested. You, you mean to tell me that, that if I can tell you something to change your life? You mean to tell me if I can tell you something that will exceed heroin and cocaine and and sensual sex and all of, of this world. You, you mean tell me if I can tell you that which will fill your inner most being with the Spirit of God, that that's not worth an effort? That's what he is talking about. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. I've had people tell me, I don't believe in that old bloody religion. I think God, I, I believe in it. Amen. I believe for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. God's son lived for 33 years on the face of this earth and died. He was crucified. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Somebody said, well, how in the world can you believe it? I believe it because I have experienced it. Yes. I believe it because his word has declared it. Nicodemus, you must be born again or you can't even see the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Well, wait a minute, Wayne. Don't get us so involved that we have to become committed. The, don't, don't, don't get us so involved that the, that's what's robbing our young people today from a good quality of life. Lack of responsibility, lack of commitment. Oh, that's not something new. Socrates uh, said at the side gates of Athens and said, 
The city leaders were letting their kids go to hell. We're doing the same thing today. But where do we find hope? Where, where do we find this uh, not perishing but have everlasting life? Being filled with all of the fullness of God. I'm talking about some religious exercise and talking about acting on your belief. If I, if I believe on something and if I don't act on it, it's of no value. Amen. I, I can believe and, and not do anything about it. I, I can believe and just meander around. But if I believe that word that I act upon it, that by faith they acted on the ritual of offering up the sacrifice. By faith they look forward to that annual forgiveness, that annual cleansing. We're not looking by faith, we're looking through faith. Semantics, but there's a difference between by faith and true faith. We are saved through faith. Now listen to what the Bible said then in the 27th verse. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. Where is boasting? God, I, I deserve it. No, you don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Amen. I, I deserve death and damnation. But God loved me enough that he made a propitiation. He made a sacrifice. He made a, an atonement, a vicarious suffering. He suffered in my place. He died in my place. He shed his blood that I might have remission of my sin, that I might have my sins removed. I don't have to live under condemnation. I don't have to live in sin. I have received forgiveness of my sin through his blood. Glory to God. Now that sounds good, but how do we act on it? How do we put that into action in our life? Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Lord God, we're still arguing, we're still wrestling within ourselves. Well, I've got to do something. Lord God, I, I, I must have to do something. I listened to a nut the other night uh, on uh, uh, cable television that said is sending out miracle sand and miracle oil and all. Let I me. Mean, I gotta have something either ingest or rub on me. Or I, I gotta have something. Yes, you, you gotta have belief, and then you have to act on that belief, which is faith. Faith is action based on belief, sustained by confidence that that which we believe is true. Glory to God. Now, he said then. In the 28th verse, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now that's not just thinking and just saying. That's not just becoming religious. But that is believing something and acting on that belief. A man is justified. Hallelujah. A man is, we're all sinners, we've all